As of this recording, my Toronto Blue Jays are dead last in the American League East. Still love my team. Just very, very frustrating to watch. Um, so I'm going to take a moment, and uh, you do too, and uh, I'll catch you. I'll catch you after the open. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cybersecurity 101. I'm Mark Hemingway, Creative Content Director here at Archer Energy Solutions. Today, we're going to talk about geofencing. Um, geofencing, I've heard that term thrown around a lot. Um, geography plays a part in this, I'm sure, some kind of having to do with that. Um, but anyway, let's just get right into it. As always, I use ChatGPT to help me uh, learn. So here we go. So in cybersecurity, what is geofencing? Uh, geofencing is a virtual perimeter set up around a real world geographic area, often used in cybersecurity to control access to trigger alerts based on the location of devices and users. Okay, so it's in cybersecurity. I'm hoping that maybe this will clear things up a little more, to get a little more information about. So what is the purpose of the virtual perimeter? Is to define a boundary around a physical location and trigger actions to alert when devices or users enter or exit that area. All right, so it says it's cybersecurity, which means it has to be in the cyber world. So this perimeter is in the cyber world? That's my question. And then, and can you give an example of a perimeter? So I want to understand, like, is that something like it includes my desk here is in the perimeter, or is it something inside inside the computer, like a digit, like a virtual? Anyway, let's just see what they say. Uh, yes, the perimeter is virtual, defined in the cyber world. An example of a geofence perimeter could be around a company's headquarters or a restricted government facility. Okay, so it is actually, it's just everything that's within that perimeter that is digital, I'm guessing, or in the cyber world. So if I put a, I put a geofence around my house and anytime anybody accessed anything through here, it would let me know. Okay, got it. All right, took me a second there. I mean, I kind of got it, but I kind of at the same time was like, I just need a little more. All right, so as always, when we're doing these programs, I like to find out the good and the bad. So can you tell me how geofencing is used for both good and bad? So good purposes such as enhancing security, enabling location-based services, or improving marketing strategies. However, it can be exploited for bad purposes uh, such as invasion, surveillance, tracking individuals without their consent, or targeting users with intrusive advertisements based on their location data. So Facebook. <laughs> All right, my next question has to do with organizations and protection of privacy. Um, so how do businesses or organizations balance the benefits of geofencing with the need to protect user privacy? They balance the benefits of geofencing with user privacy by implementing transparent privacy policies obtaining explicit consent for location tracking, anonymizing data whenever possible, and adhering to relevant regulations such as GDR, GDPR and CCPA. They also limit data collection to what is necessary for the intended purpose and prioritize user control over their location data. So they're not there for that, so. Okay, makes sense. Although the bad guys might be there for that. They're not going to ask you for my permission. So, fun times. So, big, big generic question here. Um, where is geofencing beneficial? Like, who, who, who benefits from using this? I mean, I guess that was pretty self-explanatory, but I felt like I needed to say that. All right. So, in retail, we all know retail, uh, fleet management, security, logistics, um, smart homes. Okay. So we, we as people can use geofencing as well. So that's good uh, and bad, I guess. Uh, emergency services, okay. Asset tracking and event management. Okay. It's not just it's not just for the big wigs and the and the big the big people. Anybody, everybody. Okay. Cool. 
All right, before we're able to put a perimeter around this particular episode, let's take a look at the last question that I like to ask at the end of every episode, which is what is a real life incident that involved geofencing? One real life incident involving geofencing occurred when law enforcement agencies used geofencing data to identify and apprehend suspects involved in criminal activities. For instance, in some cases, authorities have used geofencing data uh, from mobile devices to pinpoint the locations of individuals present near the scene of a crime. Interesting. Aiding in investigations and arrest. Oh, well, there you go. I like that. That's a good example. Thank you, ChatGPT, for that wonderful example. That was good. All right, well, that just wraps up a little package with a little bow on it of this episode of Cybersecurity 101. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our socials at... Um, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And as always, go to our YouTube channel at ArcherU. Check out a whole bunch of other videos that we do there. So we have hundreds and hundreds of videos for you to choose from, for you to enjoy. So um, until next time, bye. You can catch new episodes every Thursday. Follow us on YouTube at ArcherU. Like, subscribe, and click the bell notification to be notified when a new episode has been released. Is there a question or a topic you'd like Mark to address on an upcoming episode of Cybersecurity 101? Leave them in the comments below and check back in every Thursday for a brand new episode.